This is one of my favourite places. The White Stag Rock, found on Bambra Beach on the Northumbrian coast. Nobody really knows how it got here. We know that it's been painted on the rock for at least a century. It's said that many years ago, a white stag was being chased by a band of hunters all the way from Spindleston. It ran upon the rocks, still being chased, and jumped into the sea to escape. Whenever the nearby lighthouse is painted, the white stag is also given a fresh coat of paint. There's no doubt this place has a mystical feel to it. White stags are a very important part of folklore in Britain, and this is by no means the only tale we'll have. So this is a video on one of my favourite topics in folklore and legend. It's easy to imagine our forebears catching a glimpse of them in some hidden glade in the woods, or moving ghost-like across the wild moors, or stood high on some cliffside looking out across the land. The white stag was something to be desired, but always out of reach, always leading the hunt onwards to a destiny ordained by the gods. From the dark distant memories of the wild hunt has grown the very stuff of legend. Our ancient ancestors believed the white stags to be messengers from the other world. They symbolize not just the existence of the other world, but the forces from there that are present and in action. The stag would often appear when something sacred, such as a law or a code, was being broken. To those that saw it, there would surely be a great change for them on the horizon. Often this meant great and heroic adventures, and other times it meant a shift in spiritual character. Sometimes these encounters can be the trigger of great events, with the stag being seen at the beginning of a period of great turmoil or great struggle. In the legends of King Arthur, the white stag is elusive and impossible to catch. Not even the great king can catch the stag. It's in the pursuit of this beast that humanity's spiritual quest is represented, always searching for something just out of reach. Its entrance or discovery is often the signal for the Knights of the Round Table to begin a high and noble quest. Much like I described at the start with the stag being hunted near Bambra, before escaping by jumping into the sea, the killing or capturing of a white stag is impossible. Being mystic creatures from the other world, they will always be able to evade mortal men. But there's beauty in this, being such elegant creatures, it's hard to believe that any man pure of heart would even want to slay such a beast. One story that I read in Sheila Kinnanmunt's book, Five Folk Tales, tells of the white stag of Strathtyrum. According to legend, a white stag roams the Strathtyrum woods near St Andrews. There was once a girl that lived with her grandmother in a cottage in these woods. One night, she was lying in her bed when she heard a noise outside. Looking out of her window, she saw a stag. It wasn't like the others she'd seen. It was pure white and it was looking straight at her. So she grabbed her coat and shoes and headed out the door. There it stood, shining in the moonlight. She stretched out her hand to stroke it, and before she knew what was happening, she was up on its back, and they were flying through the woods, over the burn and over the top of Drumcarrow Crag. Down the slope of a nearby hill, the girl saw a small door wide open on the hillside itself. The girl entered the fairy mound and met the fairies who were having a party. There was much merriment and laughter and dancing. Now those who enter the realm of the fairies usually never return or emerge decades later. 
but the girl was returned safely home that night. Perhaps this was due to the protection of the stag. Another famous white stag is found on the Isle of Arran at Brodick Castle, which I did a video on last year. The stag appears near the castle whenever the clan chief of the Hamiltons is about to die, and good fortune always comes to those lucky enough to see it on the island. Much like many other aspects of our folklore, ancient belief was adapted or added to with the arrival of Christianity. The white stag features in Christian-themed tales and stories, most famously in Scotland from around 1128, when King David I went out hunting despite advice given to him by his priest who had warned him against it. Ignoring this advice, King David had ridden out and come across a white stag. He immediately gave chase, but became unsaddled from his horse who threw him. The white stag turned to attack. Helpless, David fell on his knees and cried out to God to protect him. The stag charged fully at David with his antlers down. Just as the antlers were about to strike, the king managed to grab them, and as he did so, the antlers turned into a cross and the stag stopped dead in its tracks, lifted its head high and simply disappeared into thin air. To give thanks to God for saving him, David built and dedicated a shrine to the Holy Rood, which later became Holyrood Abbey, leading to the development of Holyrood Palace. The Christian symbology of the white stag to me seems a little contradictory and confusing. One could interpret the stag in this story as being a force of nature, or the old pagan ways dying out and giving way to the new religion. But other stories depict the stag as a holy symbol. To some Christians, the white stag came to symbolise Christ, perhaps in part by the Saint Eustace legend, wherein the Roman soldier Eustace is hunting and happens upon a deer with a cross between his antlers. Eustace then converts on the spot and is put through numerous tragedies and persecutions, including the death of his family, until being miraculously reunited with them. However, it's clear that this pious legend has pagan predecessors, and the white stag has been important long before the arrival of Christianity. Its symbology has been very important and inspirational for centuries. From the badge of King Richard II, right up to modern scouting. Interestingly, in a speech at the end of the fourth worldwide jamboree of the scouting movement, founder Sir Robert Baden-Powell said, You may look upon that white stag as the pure spirit of scouting, springing forward and upward, ever leading you onward and upward to leap over difficulties. C.S. Lewis wrote of the white stag having an important role in his work The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. But the Pevensey children, now grown up, chase the stag, hoping to gain wishes for catching it. It's in chasing the beast that they once more stumble back through the wardrobe and return to England. I'm a huge fan of stags and deer. I think they're such wonderful and beautiful creatures. Which is why I don't really like that tale about King David, but I'm hugely attracted to the idea that the stags are messengers from the other world. It's always a pleasure for me to watch them in the woods or out in the fields. I'd like to end this video with a story that happened to me back in April. I was walking through the woods not too far from my house and I was hoping to find a tree from which I could take a branch to make a walking stick or staff. I wasn't content with just buying one that's been mass produced. I wanted a locally grown one that I'd found myself. I'd been exploring the woods for a few hours every other day 
but was unsuccessful in finding any good branches. But on my third day in the woods, I managed to spot a lone deer watching me from the greenery. We looked at each other for about 10 seconds or so before she walked off. I followed her in that direction, walking for a few minutes. Before too long, I'd come across a hazel tree with many straight and strong branches, perfect for a staff. Below this tree lay a baby deer, peacefully observing its surroundings. It almost felt that after so long of searching, the deer had led me to this lone hazel tree, a tree associated with wisdom and knowledge, and gifted me such a great staff. There are many examples of deer and stags leading people to places or prizes, but it's the white stag that takes it further and leads people to great adventures or quests or their destiny. And one day I do hope to see one.